Welcome to my video, and in today's video, we're going to go over C-Log and the upcoming firmware release of Canon C-Log 3 for the R5. Now, if you haven't done so already, please consider hitting the like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribing, and you can become one of our new members, and of course, increase the brightness of today, because you'll make my day. Anyway, on to the video. Now, C-Log, if you don't know, is a flat color profile, somewhat of a color profile for Canon cameras that allows you to capture the maximum dynamic range, meaning the brightest parts and the darkest parts are all visible, or you try to get as much of it visible as you possibly can so that you can, of course, tweak it later and then get the best looking image that you can when you're outputting your video. When filming this way, you don't always want to film this way if you're trying to just record a video and then get it out as quickly as possible. But if you have time to really give it that cinematic look and you want to tweak your colors and bring all that nice, juicy, buttery, film-like detail into your video, then you can record in log and potentially achieve that. And using, of course, the advantage of your camera's maximum dynamic range. Now, there's certain different flavors that each camera manufacturer would actually allow you to use and how it works will depend on how they intentionally wanted it to work and the sensor that you're using. For example, the 5D Mark IV eventually came out with a C-Log update. Now there's three flavors of C-Log that I currently know of, C-Log 1, 2, and 3. Now the 5D Mark IV only used C-Log 1. Now what this means in C-Log 1 allows you to use about 12 stops of dynamic range, which is like the difference of the maximum amount of highlight and the darkest part of your image. The more stops of dynamic range, the more the, of that difference in highlights and shadows that you can pick up and then put in your image, which will look great. Most, as a standard, most cinematic cameras do 15 stops of dynamic range and above. And that's why they're so expensive. Now, the 5D Mark IV sensor could only pick up around 12 stops of dynamic range, and C-Log did about 12 stops of dynamic range. C-Log 2 and C-Log 3 can go higher. C-Log 3, for example, can do about 14 stops of dynamic range of detail that it can put in. And C-Log 2, I, I think, does a little bit more, but not quite sure. But in today's video, we're going to look at the R5. Now, I talked a lot, but we're going to look at the R5. And we're going to look at C-Log, C-Log 2, and C-Log 3. Because we're anticipating that Canon R5 will have an update to C-Log 3 coming soon. Hopefully, like, by April is what I heard of. But you could already film all three formats of C-Log in the R5 if you film in RAW. Because when you work with the RAW file, it allows you to actually choose C-Log 2 or C-Log 3. You can't choose C-Log 1. Now, what I was able to do here, and let's go to the computer... What I was able to do here is record three different angles or three different versions of C-Log, which I would have shown you the video by now. And these three different versions of C-Log were recorded at the same time because I set the camera, the R5, to record in 8K plus proxy. And the proxy I set to record in C-Log 1. And then the 8K RAW file, which I imported in twice, is set to both C-Log three and then this version is C log two. So C log three, C log two, and C log all compared. Now the first thing I want to bring your eyes towards is that in this screen right here, it's all the C logs and I named them accordingly in this file. So if I bring in C log one, that's this angle, the, the rightmost angle. C log two is the center and then C-Log3 is the leftmost angle. And what I was looking for is comparing basically what I can see outside versus the details of my face. And just by looking at it visually before we go to the vector scopes, you can see that the darkest parts are easier to see in C-Log2. So C-Log2 picked up a lot of detail in my shadowy areas here while still somewhat maintaining the highlights a little i mean it seems to clip out especially here without bringing any detail there but it did a good job recovering recovering the shadows c log 3 on the other hand a lot of the details in the shadows are extra dark 
but I think, if I'm not mistaken, I can make out a couple of more things in the highlighted portion of the video. So it does a better job at attempting to recover highlights and not focusing as much on the darker areas. In C-Log, C-Log 1, unfortunately, clipped a lot of these highlights and lost a lot of these shadows, which if you had a standard picture profile, you probably wouldn't even be able to see outside. So C-Log does have some effect, but when it comes to actually picking up detail, it definitely has less dynamic range than the other two C-Logs. Now let's look at the, these Lumetri sculpts right here. So we can actually see how much detail in the highlights and shadows are in each portion. Now, as I mentioned before, this is C-Log 3, C-Log 2, and the original C-Log. C-Log obviously crushed a lot of the shadow detail, and highlight detail is, is definitely crushed. Not as much color information at all in this image on C-Log 3. Okay, so that, that's pretty much evident. C-Log 2 had as I said, a lot more information was present in the shadows. And in the highlights, obviously that section was still clipped and you couldn't recover that information, but it was still, a lot of color information was present in those highlights. But when you look at C-Log 3, C-Log 3 seemed to preserve potentially a lot more information in the highlights. And the shadow detail, similar to, though not as badly, uh, similar to C-Log 1, a uh, little bit more information, but pretty well crushed when compared to C-Log 1. So what are the advantage? What does this mean? Well, let's look at the shot from C-Log 1. C-Log 1 and, again, all of these were taken at exactly the same time. C-Log 1 is, if you have it, use it. But if you could use C-Log 2 or C-Log 3, then it's almost like a no-brainer that you should use those other C logs for information, but if you want a, a little bit more contrasty image, then then I guess C log will work for you while bringing in that that extra little bit of dynamic range. C log two shot. If you want, I think C log two is like the maximum amount of information that you're going to get. You could see a lot more detail in this shot in the shadows that were pretty much darkened out in the previous recording modes. And you can still see outside, and especially after color correction, I'm sure you can get this information to look pretty much nice outside. And yes, those sky highlights are blown out, but that is the cost of wanting to get information and work with what you have from at least what we're trying to film, which was the darker area of this. And then C-Log 3, which is expected in the Canon update, really seemed, at least in this shot, to be a little bit more contrasty, but it didn't do a bad job of really picking up a nice clean image all around from the highlights outside, which seems to have a, still a lot of detail outside. Again, the sky's blown out. And still being able to pick up what's inside a lot more than the regular sea log. So regular sea log, it was just too dark inside, too bright outside. So that's the difference between C-Log 1, C-Log 2, and C-Log 3. And yes, as of today, you can record all three versions at the same time on the R5. Though, with the coming Canon update, you will be able to record it without having to record RAW, because it was RAW with proxy that allowed me to record all three at exactly the same time. So I hope this video at least helped you visualize the difference between all three C-Logs. C-Log 2, I believe, will not be in the update because it's almost like you really don't potentially get that much more information with C-Log 2. But hey, it helped bring in a lot of detail in those shadows in what I saw here um, versus C-Log 3. But C-Log 3 will potentially get you all of the information you need anyway without needing to really adjust that, uh, the, the highlights and shadows to an extreme at that point but it's still there and it still exists. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And that update for Canon's firmware for the R5, I think as of right now is expected around April instead of now. So that kind of stinks, but as always, thank you and more videos coming up. I just wanted to get this out to you guys so you had that information and you can look forward to C-Log3.
Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time. Take care. I'm out. Bye-bye.